Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to stand here today and um, give you a perspective from NERC. Um, I'd like to say we're really pleased as NERC to be the lead sponsors of today's event, and I'm hoping to have a really good discussion and hear the discussions that you have late, uh, later today. Um, Duncan, Duncan Wingham was supposed to be standing up here and giving a presentation, um, as it is with chief executives. He had something else that uh, he had to do, and he sends his apologies he can't be here today. I could try and give a Duncan kind of presentation, but frankly, I've put a tie on, and I can't get his hair right. So <laughs> it's never going to happen. So I'm going to give a presentation from sort of my perspective, really, terrestrial sciences and a bit of fresh water and the discipline areas, a perspective on sort of NERC funding and the, our directions and our processes and how you can sort of use those directions and processes to sort of uh, further the concept of natural capital. I was given this title, uh, and again, like Giles, I'm probably not going to answer it. I'm not sure what the question is, and I don't know what the question mark is. But what I'm going to try and do is provide a sort of a wider perspective on natural capital and, and how NERC can sort of take your ideas forward. I expect you know a lot, a lot of this slide, but it's always worth reiterating these things. Um, NERC is a leading public funder in, of environmental science. We fund about £330 million worth of funding each year, and this goes into research, training, and it goes into innovation. Uh, the picture is important, and it shows scale. And we work from the global scale, the cryosat satellite, uh, Duncan's baby there, down to the landscape scale, down to the population, down to the molecular, and right down to the nano scale. So we have a real wide perspective on what is the natural environment. And I think natural capital has an impact to play on all those scales. Again, you probably know a lot of this slide, but um, it's what do we support? Well, we support lots of scientists. Um, the U recent UK Biz report showed that the UK environmental science research and researchers are actually top in terms of publications and quality of publications in the world. And this is a real fantastic news for the UK, and it's something we as NERC want to try and continue and make sure we're top of the tree. There's a lot of challenges coming from the USA and from China, but if we can keep you, keep you there as the top of the, the, the world environmental scientists, that's really good news. We also fund a lot of students. Uh, we fund them through things such as DTPs, um, CDTs, and of course, short courses. And we also fund a lot of international work. Um, a good one I want to come on to later is ESPA, Ecosystem Services for Poverty Alleviation. And I'll come, as I say, I'll come back to that. We also fund many universities, not just the top five, 10, or 15. We fund over 55 universities spread throughout the UK. Uh, and we fund a lot of institutes, and a lot of you here today are from CEH, obviously a core institute for national, um, national capital of natural capital. We also have a massive infrastructure at our disposal, or more correctly, at your disposal. Um, I gave this present, a presentation similar to this a few months ago, and I think we'd lost a submarine about then. I think since then we've lost another submarine. But uh, in replacement, we've gained lots of little robots down at, at Plymouth, so I guess it's all good news, really. <laughs> we're, we're doing okay. Um, this is our strategy and our vision. Um, as you can see from the title, Business of Environment, it's kind of quite ambiguous. Uh, and it's kind of, it's meant to be um, ambiguous, and we'll say why later. Um, we also have a vision to place environmental science at the heart of responsible management in our pl of our planet. And it's probably worth trying to unpack this a little bit in terms of understanding our strategy and our focus on emphasizing the contribution. Our focus is emphasizing the contribution of our science rather than the detail of the science. A lot of other sort of research council strategies maybe focus on the detail of the science and what they're trying to do. We're trying to understand what our science can contribute in terms of a global perspective or sort of in terms of the worldwide uh, angle. And the key challenge really is to understand what effects we, I mean we as humans, are having in the world. And the systems of the world have evolved, as we know, over hundreds of thousands of years, and they've adapted. And now the environment is being irrevocably and rapidly changed by humans. And I think, really, there are several key themes relevant to natural capital that we can sort of pull out in, in the, the strategy that we have. The first one, really, is um, anthropogenic change. Since NERC was established in 1965, I think it's fair to say that we've undergone a profound change in, in the world and that we no longer actually live in a natural environment. We are the Natural Environment Research Council, but natural environment, in a sense, doesn't exist anymore. There's virtually no part of the world that is unchanged by humans. We've blown the nitrogen cycle, we've blown biodiversity, the planetary boundaries for both are just you know, way off the scale. And there's almost no terrestrial landscape out there that is original. We are, as humans, we are the largest sources of change on the planet. And that's an important perspective for us to have, to 
try and understand where we are coming from in terms of a research council and what our challenges therefore have to be. The other thing we need to recognise really is because of that, there's such large challenges that we are not, as a research council, in a position to address those and to provide answers. We need to address all these aspects to have an impact on the planet. And we, to do this, we can't do it alone. We need to work in partnerships. We need to work with other research councils, um, we need to, with other disciplines, other technologies, and obviously the human dimension. And this has already been picked up several times in, in the talks already. We also have to work with government colleagues, be the DEFRA, DFID, um, DEC, etc. If we don't work with these people, with these other funders, other, other stakeholders, we are not going to be able to answer the big, wider questions. We are just a part of that puzzle. And I think this, this strategy tells us that and sort of points in that direction. We must also recognise that the majority, if not all, of the ecosystem services or services we derive from the environment, food, um, water, nutrients, minerals, etc., they are all provided actually by private enterprise. We don't get any of those free or from, from the government. Therefore, we, as the Natural Environment Research Council, cannot isolate ourselves from business, and we should not isolate ourselves from business, and we need to work with them and to address these great problems. And it's all part of the wider package, the research councils, the businesses, and that's the only way we can address these wider solutions. The fourth thing to unpack, really, is recognising that there is a tension between the benefits we derive from the environment and our desire to keep, keep it both healthy and sustainable. And that's really where the, the ambiguity of the title comes in. It tries to acknowledge this tension, this difficulty about how we, we are understanding the environment, we manage the environment, and we deal with the much wider stakeholders and things that we, we need to do to, to get things safely out of it. So the NERC, NERC vision to place environmental science at the heart of responsible management really sets out where I think we need to be. NERC isn't a campaigning organisation, and NERC's not a policy-forming organisation. Our purpose is to fund and pursue science, and that, therefore, will provide a perfect uh, objective evidence base which others, such as government, such as campaigners, can use in policy, or can use in their campaigning, or can use in their land management practices. And that is what our purpose is. So recognising these challenges and tensions, we have three areas uh, we've emphasised within the strategy. Um, really cons consider these sort of expressions of challenges or opportunities. The first one is benefiting from natural resources. And we see this as an expression, really, of natural capital and ecosystem approaches. And it's a recognition that we, as a population, need to make and use food, uh, water, energy and minerals. And our science tells us how the environmental processes control this resource availability. Now, from a natural capital perspective, we need to understand the value of these ecosystems and these processes, understanding their tipping points, their values, their availability. Only by doing that can we then answer the question of how to manage these things in a, in a proper and responsible way. The second one is resilience to environmental hazards. Uh, this includes things such as extreme weather, volcanoes, earthquakes, emergent diseases, invasive pests and path pathogens. All these things impact on our lives, maybe not in a daily way, but on all aspects of our lives. Our science needs to understand and seeks to understand these processes. And knowing the cost of these processes, knowing their implications and knowing what happens if, if they occur, will help us to sort of manage and to mitigate these risks going forward. So again, natural capital has a role to play in understanding our environmental hazards. The third one, managing environmental change. And this is on recognising that what we're doing to the environment now is much bigger and much faster than it was 15, 20 years ago. These picked up on slides by Giles earlier. Um, we need to understand holistic concepts that are through the integration of the work and to provide processes to understand that these processes and how these processes are working. And again, using a natural capital as a framework could help to prioritise what we're trying to do and how we manage these processes much more um, responsibly. So what I'm hoping, what message I guess I'm trying to say here is that you can see natural capital and exploring how we value in terms of ecosystems has a lot to contribute to what are these big cha challenges and these big challenges that, that NERC has to answer, but answer with other people involved. So sitting beside the strategy is a new mechanism for funding and funding strategic research. And hopefully we're now trying to do this in a much more competitive and a responsive manner. 
There's two bodies uh, you, you should be aware of, and hopefully you are aware of, two, not three, not four. Um, the first one is SPAG, our Strategic Programs Advisory Group. And this is a, this is a group um, which actually met last week for the first time, and it should have two outputs going forward. Uh, it will produce strategic program areas, and these are sort of large bodies of significant work, uh, multi-grants, multi-funders, uh, large timescale type pieces. Thinking here of things like valuing nature program, best, et cetera, that sort of scale of work. The other thing it will produce is highlight topics. And these are much more constrained activities akin to sort of larger grants, between one, three million pounds, for example, over shorter time frames. And they're there to answer specific activities, uh, specific challenges. We identify there's an issue, we can put some money into it, short term type approach. As I say that met last week, so keep your eye open for these, these topics. And it's up to you as a community to put your ideas into these, these into SPAG through the ideas process, and you have been doing. Um, the other body we have is a joint strategic response. And this is a response to, this is a board which will respond to opportunities, primarily from other funders, to do a piece of work with that funder. <coughs> funder. So it's a multi-initiative program where NERC can address some of its, um, its strategic areas that it needs to address from a much wider sort of perspective. It gives us leverage and it gives us opportunity to work in a much wider perspective. An example is the Aquaculture Club, which is now live on our web, and that's working with BBSRC and CFAS and a few others. We do, of course, have other funding streams. Um, there's a lot of them out there. I think you probably know them most fa fairly well. National Capability, Discovery Science, Training, etc., Innovation. So I won't dwell on those. Information's on the website if you want them. <laughs> so this is the strategy, uh, and this is our strategic process for delivering science. And I hope you can see that there really is a role for, for natural capital. There's a role for natural capital in our strategy, and there is a role for natural capital in being delivered by our new processes. Natural capital and the research around it, as I see it really, does have a role to play, and it's not just in local challenges or local conservation type issues, very important as though they are, we recognize those, but it does have a role in the much, <coughs> these much wider societal challenges that we face. And again, I think this has already been brought, brought out in the, the presentations before me. We are NERC, <laughs> I am NERC, we are NERC, um, and how these challenges are addressed is very much up to you and to be advised by you and to be addressed by you. So it's your chance and your opportunity sort of to talk to us and to put ideas such as through the, the SPAG process, et cetera. And you as a community are very well rep represented on all the boards and the councils and the, the groups that we have in NERC already. This is a very much reduced slide from the one uh, presented earlier on um, by Alan. Um, it sort of more focuses, I suppose, on, on the NERC perspective. And it's, I'm trying to simply really trying to show here that NERC has both a both a past and a present in, the nat in understanding natural capital, capital and then providing knowledge for the natural capital initiative and understanding how it works. Um, the key things here, the two things I'd like to pull out, are the Valuing Nature Network. Many of you here are already signed on to the, the, um, the network or part of the network and have been actively involved in it. And it, this network has directly led to the £5 million initiative that NERC Investment has put up into the Valuing Nature programme. The Value in Nature program, there's two things I'd just like to say about it very quickly. One is, I'm really chuffed, I'm <laughs> really chuffed about it. We've now got a great coordination team in place. It's going to be announced, it's not announced yet. Um, they're already fully immersed in you as a community, and most of them are actually here today walking amongst you in incognito. Um, it hasn't been a formally announced yet, but I, I suspect most of you know who you are, who they are. <laughs> For example, Anita Weatherby is giving a, a, a drop-in presentation at a post about 11 o'clock, I think, so you might want to go along and have a chat with her. But we've got a really great team, and they cover all the disciplines, importantly. And I'm really excited what they're going to do. And this is the second thing as well. Value and Nature program is interdisciplinary. We have ESRC on board, we have BBSRC on board, AHRC on board, and DEFRA. They're all involved, they're all putting money in, so it's actually a sum significantly above £5 million. And the key here, the key point for me really, is that yes, natural science is required to provide the basic underpinning knowledge to provide data and on the concepts, but to deliver it and to deliver our strategic challenges requires that data, that knowledge to be put in the context of the much wider disciplines. So with this, we have the biology, we have the social, we have the policy, and we have the arts, all coming together to provide 
um, a new perspective, hopefully, on, on taking the ideas forward. Arguably, I think natural capital is a much more diverse discipline-based concept than we've ever we've had in a lot more challenges that we've had. So it, it really does encompass the social the dimension, the arts dimension, the biological dimension, much, much more so than other things we've done before. However, I think it's probably fair to say enough, this has already been picked up, that although including, that including the natural environment in decision-making processes probably has not really been taken forward so far. It's been done in a minimal way, and this really has led to a decline in, sort of, in biodiversity and in our stocks and our, flow, and our flows. Um, but there have been recent advances, and they've already been referred to, the natural, National Ecosystem Assessment, the NEA follow-on, the Natural Capital Committee, um, all, using, all show that there really is a broad brush approach in terms of science disciplines and linking these to the economic basis of decision making. So from my perspective, at least, the tools are becoming there. Again, I agree they're not there yet. The knowledge is getting there, maybe it's not fully there yet. But these things are starting to be there and are starting to come together. Therefore, for me, for me and from my perspective, the key effectiveness here then is creating that interdisciplinarity and making sure that natural capital community, which is you, you out there, you are joined together, you are interdisciplinary, and you are in a very good position to really start driving this, this idea, this process forward. Okay, um, I'd like to bring back the idea of the, the knowledge requirement of natural capital back into the sort of the heart of the vision of, of NERC. Again, to place environmental science at the heart of responsible management of our planet. This in the title is somewhat ambiguous, but the title, uh, title sort of ties in knowledge gained from the basic science with the methods of environmental management. And to effectively provide that environmental management, I think we all recognise there is a need to understand the values of we, that we place on those ecosystems and on those services that they produce. And we need to understand, understand the science to understand how these services function, and as well as their interactions of these services with the environment, be that environment man-made or be it, be it natural. There, this then is an opportunity to work with NERC to sort of broaden the perspective of natural capital and we can move it into areas such as food, water, energy, security, so looking at the nexus process, which um, has already been seen in the SRC, but also in developing new infrastructures. The green, the, green, the grey, the blue infrastructures are sort of emerging, and this is a sort of concept that natural capital really needs to grasp and take forward. And again, there's also the purely urban environment. Under BESS, we fund urban BESS. Ooh, OK, two minutes, thank you. Uh, we fund uh, urban BESS, and this is... Um, this is a challenge uh, from the urban environment, which we are just uh, engaging in now. And there's other challenges, such as mega cities and brownfield sites. So there is a big piece to do in the urban environment for us. Going forward, um, putting science at the heart of responsible management of our planet also has a very commercial perspective. Natural capital has a strong policy pull, but the business, there's also business needs and issues here. And this is going to be coming in the, the following presentation, I think, by Paul. For us, I think there's a sort of there's two issues. There's one challenges of terminology and talent challenges of persuasion. And the Valuing Nature Program Coordination Team really recognises the issue of terminology, and it's the ability to translate science, the, the language of science, into the language of the business domain. We haven't really been very successful, I don't think, in doing this yet. Uh, there is a difference in ontology between what the science community thinks and what the business community thinks and needs, and it's actually trying to bring that together. And again, the Valuing Nature Program Coordination Team is very aware of that and is actually has great ideas to drive that forward. Next one is, civil pers uh, is persuasion. There are many companies out there, Aldersgate's a great example, that already get natural capital and want to work with it and understand the value of the environment. But, for example, the, the civil engineers that NERC works with, um, civil engineering companies we work with, they really want to get it and want to move it forward. But there's other companies that don't, and quite often civil engineering companies work for job specifiers. Uh, these are things such as housing agencies, um, network rail, for example. Uh, the top level management of these places just sees the pound sign. It doesn't see the infrastructure underneath or the value of it. And the civil engineers really want to create a case to work with the, the specifiers to make the infrastructure and the, the natural capital type case. And they're very keen to work with us as the NERC to send in scientists such as yourself to really look at these, these developments, the green, the greater blue infrastructure developments, to create a sort of a sound environmental basis and a sound environmental valuation to put into the economic models that actually make sense to these guys. And there's a real good challenge around there. 
So to finish, I'd like to sort of just widen the perspective even more slightly and think, consider a few more issues that you can address and we should be addressing. The key one I think really uh, nice to take forward is a global perspective. I've referred to mega cities. We're doing a lot of fund funding in mega cities, uh, China, India. Of course, London's a mega city as well. A lot of atmospheric pollution already referred to uh, mental, human health, mental, physical, otherwise. There's a really good piece of work that can be done on these really large scales. ESPA, I referred to earlier, Ecosystem Services for Poverty Alleviation. It's a £40 million pound programme with DFID and ESRC. There's some really fantastic work coming out of that, and I really do encourage you to go and look at the ESPA website. There's some really, it's transformational what some of the stuff is coming out, and it is relevant to natural capital. For example, they're starting to look at, understand work of forest, forest systems working in a sort of a mosaic, mosaic landscape, which is a much more efficient way of utilising the land than just the way that it's being done at the moment. This is transformational, and it's also addressing ideas of payment for ecosystem services, but addressing the issues on poor nations. And again, this is actually going to be a step change in what, an understanding of natural capital and an application of these areas. The concept goes beyond terrestrial, goes beyond freshwater, marine, etc. Um, oil rigs and ship wrecks, ship wrecks are a great example. We're, we're doing some funding. Should we leave an oil rig in, in the North Sea when it's finished, or should we take it away? What is the actual valuation of doing either of those processes? Same with ship wrecks. Uh, again, business participants. Some people get it, some people don't get it. We need to try and work together to make those, that sort of much more joined up piece. And again, infrastructure, referred to the blue, grey, green. We lack the ecological and interdisciplinary knowledge at the moment to evaluate the, the actual effects of the infrastructure on things such as biodiversity. And because of that, we can't really provide a, a sound management process for infrastructure. If we can start delivering that sort of thing, then we can start getting these infrastructures in place and really driving forward. I'll leave it there. Thank you, Anna. Thank you.